Biodiesel is a renewable fuel that's made from a number of different feedstocks. Uh, it can be made from vegetable oils, uh, recycled cooking grease, animal fats, chicken fat. Prismatic Skylight is designed to maximize the amount of light coming into the building and minimize the typical heat gain. Fuel cells are, are electrochemical devices that take air and a fuel together and uh, create electricity and the only byproduct is water. So uh, they are multi-fuel in nature, so they operate on pure hydrogen or they operate on natural gas or biogas, waste gas. And the pellet stove burns wood pellets to heat homes. Now pellet stoves are available in freestanding like a wood stove or a fireplace insert. We also have boilers that are fired with pellets. We have hot air furnaces that are fired with pellets. You can even buy a swimming pool water heater that burns pellets. We are commercializing a new low-head hydropower technology that is designed to make it cost-effective to extract energy from low-head drops. These are settings with between 5 and 20 feet of head. The technology is a new impulse turbine designed specifically to pass large quantities of water at low pressures or low heads. We provide the uh, uh, manufacturing equipment to make thin film silicon PV panels. We're an LED technology company, uh, mainly manufacturing products for heavy industrial and, uh, and commercial applications. And this is an LED street light, um, ready to save municipalities a lot of money and energy. Well, district energy is where you have a central plant and, it, and there's an underground network of pipes. So the plant produces steam or hot water or chilled water and it supplies that to buildings in a district or an area. Often you see it in large cities, college campuses, healthcare. Geothermal heat pump is a technology and a, a, a equipment that basically uses the solar energy in the earth. We go below the frost line to a constant temperature and use that as a heat sink uh, to heat and cool your home. As far as jobs, uh, our industry supports about, we project that we're going to produce about 800 million gallons this year and uh, that that supports about 31,000 jobs. I, you know, there's probably between 10 and 20,000 jobs in the United States today in fuel cells and hydrogen. Uh, the pellet industry has generated jobs in every state in the union, um, including Alaska and believe it or not, some in Hawaii. Uh, Sun Optics in California, where our manufacturing plant is, has potential around 100, 150, depending on the time of year, in manufacturing side. Um, last year, we brought our manufacturing facility in North Carolina went from about 45 employees to about 250 employees as we ramped up to meet the demands of municipalities that had funding for uh, ARA uh, funds to, to move towards more energy efficient products. Um, on average, with a customer buying one of our 120 megawatt lines would would have would hire 250 jobs directly. There would also be another 750 jobs that would be created uh, among these suppliers. Uh, right now there are thousands of people employed both from the manufacturing of the equipment, the component manufacturers of the pumps, the fans, the coils that go into the machine. There are American jobs, these machines are made here. Uh, 75 to 80 percent of the components are manufactured in the United States. The uh, National Hydropower Association has done a study that shows that about 1.4 million new jobs could be created um, in addition to adding 60 gigawatts of new energy through hydropower across the U.S. You know, there's probably about 34,000 people directly employed. So it creates jobs both in the fuel processing uh, and then maintaining the system, uh, the services required. The installation and the, 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 the financing, the system engineering. Uh, manufacturing jobs, transportation jobs, uh, service jobs, agricultural jobs. We initially work with architects and designers. We have drillers, uh, drill manufacturers, the pipe that goes in the ground, the grout that goes in the ground. Truck drivers, you have manufacturers, you have design engineers. General contractors, roofing contractors. The feedstock providers, grease collectors and, and fat renderers uh, all across the country. District energy really does become a, a like a local job uh, uh, nexus and these are you know good paying jobs and they're not exportable. 